Hello, good afternoon. And this is a very random time that I'm coming on. But I actually wanted to present a lesson today. I wanted to present a lesson. I wanted to present some information for the fellas. Good afternoon. This is a very random time that I'm coming on. So we're going to see how many people actually join me live. And I have decided to save this live to just my regular feed because so many men need to see this live. Um, I'm going to say this live and probably the next two lives. I have a couple of lessons that I would, hello, that I would like to teach on. And I believe it is an important, important lesson. This is a super important lesson. And here's the thing I want you to understand about today's lesson is uh, I recently posted David Burris. I posted, um, and I noticed that that post didn't get a lot of likes or didn't get a lot of comments, but it was talking about how a lot of the principles that those of us who are teaching from a healthy perspective, so those of us who are teaching from a kingdom perspective, hello, uh, or we're teaching from a healthy perspective, a lot of people are just not going to get it. You're just not going to get it because if you are wounded, if you are traumatized, and I'm going to talk a little bit about this in today's lesson also, you're just not going to completely understand some of these concepts because you are filtering the concepts through your wounding. And that's, you know, that's to be expected. You've been through something, you've experienced something, and now it's like your worldview has shifted. You can't um, fully take in good, healthy information because your world perspective have, has changed because of what you've been through. And, and that's of course, people who are traumatized are going to see the world differently. I understand. And I have compassion for that. So just understand that some of these concepts that we're talking about, I'm actually going to allude to that right now in today's lesson. If you have had negative experiences with men, some of the women may get triggered by today's lesson. And for the men, if you've had negative experiences with women, if you... Um, didn't have a dad in the home, didn't have a healthy male role model, you know, if you didn't have any of that, um, you're going to feel, you might feel triggered. You might not know what to do with today's lesson. But this is the reason why myself, other people who are older, so David Burris and I, we're kind of in that same age range. Other people who are older and seasoned and, you know, we've we've seen healthy relationships throughout our life. We've seen our grandparents and our parents have healthy relationships. We've seen other people have healthy relationships. We grew up with our fathers in the home. We grew up, you know, with grandfathers, fathers, uncles, you know, so we've had healthy male leadership. We've had healthy male role models. See, those of us 50 and up and, and who've experienced that and who are trying to teach from a biblical or kingdom perspective, like everybody in this new day and age are not going to get it. They're just not going to get it. So um, if you would do me the greatest favor, if you're here in the room, please give me your first name, the city, state, or country that you're coming to us from, okay? Your first name, the city, state, and country that you're coming to us from. Good afternoon. All right. Um, can you give your thoughts on Gabrielle Union interview talking about going 50-50 with the bills? <laughs> Y'all ought to know me better than that. Y'all ought to know me better than that. You know what I think. You know what I think. Gabrielle Union is the husband. And her her man is the wife. That's it. That's all I'm going to say about that. Gabrielle Union signed up to be the husband in her marriage. And her man signed up to be the wife. The end. That's my thoughts. Uh, do you support Cynthia G? Absolutely not. She is a very... Again, I want you to hear what I said earlier. She has had very negative experiences with black men. She has a son, apparently, by a black man, you know, so she can only see the world through her trauma, through her negative experiences, through her bitterness. She might not have had a father herself. So understand this. When you're thinking about the people, the content creators, the influencers, um, at some point, I would hope, that those people would share a little bit about their personal story, that they would share a little bit about their family life. They would share a little bit about, 
you know, their selves and their personal story. And that's how you're going to determine, do I want to listen to this person? Does this person have a healthy perspective? And even if they've been through something, have they done the work since then? Have they done the healing work? Because if they have not, everything they're spewing on their channel, everything that they're talking about that's toxic, that's only causing more division and more strife. And we all know what the Bible says about those people who cause strife. If you haven't read that, okay? No, you don't want anything to do with people who cause strife and division. All right, so no, absolutely not. I have been sent a couple of her videos. I will never, you know, and I didn't even finish them because it's, it's toxic. It's a very negative spirit. If Can I be honest? There's a spirit there that I don't want getting into me. I don't want it getting into me, into my heart or to my mind. I feel the same way about some red pill content creators as well. There is a demonic spirit on that. Stop consuming that content. That's a big part of the problem. You're letting that get into yourself and then it's changing the way you think about women Okay. All right. Connie from Queens. Yes. Dario, Darius Gonzalez, Darius Gonzalez from Austin. Thank you. Tyrone from Fort Lauderdale. Welcome. Akinola from Lagos, Nigeria. Welcome. Ally Queens, New York. Absolutely not. In my opinion on Gabby Union. Um, anybody else want to share their first name, the city, state or country that you're coming to us from? Okay. All right, so let's jump in. All right, hello. Okay, today's lesson is on, I got to look at the title, y'all. I can't even remember. Gentlemen, are you providing containment to your woman? So I'm going to preface this talk by letting you know that this is not my original work. KC from Lagos, Nigeria, welcome. This is not my original work. This is the work of Teal Swan. I am, when the live is over, I'm going to put the YouTube video uh, from which this content came. Uh, but she and I are very much aligned, very much on the same page when it comes to divine masculine, divine feminine, very much on the same page when we talk about polarity, very much on the same page when we're talking about gender especially in our country today. We are very much on the same page. All right. So I am speaking to the gentlemen today. I'm speaking to all the men that's within listening ear of this video, whether you are here live or if you're watching the replay. Gentlemen, it is incredibly important that if you want your relationship with a woman, a woman who is in her feminine energy, you must provide containment. And so I don't use the word containment. I use the word um, frame. I say masculine frame, right? There's a frame that you're going to provide to your woman. So I have my notes here. I have 10 pages of notes. I may not get through all of them, but we're going we're gonna to get the main meat of this message, which is all about men providing masculine frame. Teal Swan calls it containment. Okay, so the first thing that everyone needs to know is that men and women are different, okay? So we will never be the same, right? And that's what a lot of people who are fighting for the whole gender equality, it's really not about gender equality. It's about um, gender sameness. They want men and women to be the same. They want us to be able to do the same things and all of that, when in essence, that's not really what we want. We do not want gender sameness, okay? So equality in value, equality in power, or whatever else, okay? Um, but that's a losing argument because men and women are different, okay? Containment is something that women need in a relationship in order to feel good in that relationship, okay? Women cannot feel good in a relationship without containment, Okay, so what is containment and how to provide it for a woman? Okay, so there is, uh, before we go there, there is a demographic of women that actually they suggest that they don't need containment. Okay, you have a demographic of women who say, no, I do not need masculine frame or masculine containment. Okay, so the first group of women who say this, it's because they're getting containment or masculine frame or frame they're getting frame from their family of origin. They're getting frame uh, from another group of women. 
Uh, they're getting framed from their friends. Maybe they're getting framed from a male friend. I know that can be true of me. That's why I try to, I'm trying to limit my male friendships lately because I find that um, if I get too much frame from my male friends, it, it causes me not to seek a healthy relationship with a man. So I have to be really careful about that, leaning too much on my male friends and, and letting them provide male frame. Um, but that's that group. So women who um, they're getting frame, they're just not getting it from a male partner. So they're getting it from their family, their friends at work, um, their male friends. OK, that's the first group. Contrary to that first group of women and they act like they're okay without a man. So these are the women that are out here saying, I don't need a man because they're getting framed from some other, some other avenue, okay? Um, they act like they're okay, but they're really not, okay? They, uh, these women can be displeased. They can be controlling, anxious, uptight, all right? So they're not okay. There's a level of masculine frame or containment that these women need but, you know, they'll tell you they don't need it, that they're fine. Okay. The second group of women who do not want male, I'm going to put this over here. They do not want male containment. The second group of women are the women who have experienced childhood trauma. Okay. So they associate male or masculine frame, masculine containment with a lack of freedom, feeling limited, feeling controlled. Um, things like that, right? So these are the women that are, are on the internet. Oh, can't no man tell me what I can and can't wear. Can't no man tell me this or that or the third. Can't no man, I don't want no man opening my door. I don't want no man pulling out my chair. I don't see, they see all of that as a man being, you know, greater than them or a man treating them less than, okay? A lot of these women have experienced trauma, so that's why to them, any form of masculine frame or masculine containment seems toxic. That's where we get the, the term toxic masculinity, because a man wants to come in and provide frame or structure for a woman. Oh, no, 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 no. You know, don't tell me what to wear. Don't open my door. Don't pull out my chair. Don't treat me as weaker than or less than. So these women are seeing healthy containment through the lens of their trauma, okay? So that those are the two uh, demographics of women that they feel like getting containment from a man is weird, it's wrong, it's misogynistic, or it's sexist, when in fact it is not, and I'm gonna go into it in great detail, okay? So these women also, they're giving you the impression that everything's cool, they're fine, because, you know, I don't want containment, I'm good, I'm okay but they exhibit negative behavioral characteristics as well because of this lack of containment, okay? So she gives an example, and here is the example. Masculine containment or frame, it's kind of like the man is the clam shell, right? So think of the clam, think of the shell, and the woman represents the part inside that is the pearl, okay? So... This is the healthy representation. The man is the clamshell and inside of it is the pearl, okay? So that's the relationship with the divine masculine and the divine feminine. So the masculine clamshell is creating a safe nourishing space in which the female can exist or occur, right? So in order to create that pearl, it needs to be inside of that clamshell. It enables the woman to be soft and open and receptive and to grow, okay? So imagine removing that masculine shell. The female will immediately contract. It will go rigid. It will get into a state of defense, okay? We're taking that shell away and all of a sudden, ooh, and this is a coping mechanism. Once we take that shell off, that pearl cannot form the way it needs to, okay? So... Whenever there's a lack of masculine container, the female actually has to cope by, with this by becoming masculine herself. And we've seen reels and we've seen videos where people have talked about this, that that is where that flip in polarity comes in, okay? So 
this is going to have a negative impact on the woman. So in her mind, her emotions, her physical body, I believe this is the reason why women today in the last 20 years, we've seen a rise in infertility. We've seen a rise in infertility. And you know why? Because a woman must be in her feminine to procreate. She must be in her receptive feminine energy to get pregnant. She must be in her feminine energy. She cannot walk around and be masculine all day and think, oh, I've got the parts. I can procreate. I can, I can put out eggs and I can get pregnant anytime I want. You're sending a mixed message. You're acting in your masculine. And then when you're ready to have a baby, you want to rely on, oh, I got the parts. I should be able to have a baby. But a lot of women cannot. And think about this, y'all. I've seen more and more women in their 20s and their early 30s struggling to get pregnant. We're not even talking about past 35. I've seen younger women cannot get pregnant because, again, they're deeply in their masculine energy. Okay? All right. Um, the flipping polarity, that's the reason why we have the relationship issues that we have. So there's a flipping polarity, men being women, being masculine and men being feminine, right? So women being masculine, men being feminine, that has flipped that dynamic around. And that's why we have all the relationship issues that we have today. Okay. So to contain a woman, all right is to actively, not passively, create a safe space of well-being for her. This is for my gentlemen. You ready? The healthy masculine energy creates a container in which the feminine can truly exist and thrive. Okay? That is the masculine frame, the container. Many people, so in essence, now this is what's going to really trip y'all out. This is where the feminine is going to lose their mind. In essence, a man must take positive ownership of a woman. Let that sink in. He must take positive ownership of a woman. Now, I don't use the word positive ownership. I use the word responsibility. He must take responsibility for the woman. So I get why she gets a lot of pushback about this. And she talks about it at length in the video. I know, I know, here y'all come ownership the man owns me now what you know here we go all right cue to feminism all right cue to misogyny right so many people have a very negative concept of ownership but i'm gonna go into her definition i call it responsibility the man has to be willing to take responsibility for the woman so here's the reality that women actually want to be owned they don't just want to be limited, oppressed, controlled, or seen as less than. They want to be owned by a man, but what they don't want is to be limited, oppressed, controlled, or seen as less than. And the travesty is that as a society, we've taught women that that is what ownership actually is. That if someone owns you, you are oppressed, you are controlled, you are seen as less than, you are limited, when in fact... Positive ownership simply is, is a form of responsibility. So that's why I don't use the word ownership. I use the word responsibility. We want a man to take responsibility for a woman. We want him to provide that masculine frame. Okay, this is what Teal Swan says. These are her words. When a woman is owned, it's essentially the opposite of the energy of her being astray. And women, to be completely honest with you, do not do well with being stray, okay? So here's the thing about positive ownership. When you take something as a part of you to the degree that it belongs to you, it actually becomes a part of you to the degree that where you can't actually hurt that thing because hurting that thing would be hurting yourself, OK, so the Bible even talks about that, that when a man takes healthy responsibility or in her words, ownership, he is treating a woman as he would treat himself. And to hurt that woman is hurting himself. He would treat her with the same respect he would treat his own body. So that's what's so interesting about this. This is very biblical that men are to take responsibility or ownership, positive ownership of the woman in their life. OK, OK. 
So positive ownership is really the only way to stay genuinely safe in a relationship. So regardless of whether it's between a friend, a friend of the same gender or a woman and a man in a primary relationship, if you take positive ownership over something, the best interest of that thing is of your utmost concern. You now have that person's best interest at heart. This makes a woman feel happy in a relationship, that the man is going to act with her best interest at heart. Hmm. So many men who don't understand what it would look like practically to provide containment for a woman, okay? You would benefit by understanding that containment is essentially to fend for a woman, all right? When a man does not do this, a woman essentially has to fend for herself. To fend for herself is to look after, protect, and provide for herself without help. When a man fails to provide containment or masculine frame for a woman, she ends up feeling like she has to do it all herself and fend for herself. This means a male who lacks the skill of containment inevitably makes a woman feel like she's all alone. Imagine that you are in a relationship with a man and you feel as if you're all alone. I can't even imagine. So I'd rather be alone than be in a relationship like that. Not just all alone, but unsafe, starved of her needs, and as if all the pressure of life is on her. This will make a woman become controlling, anxious, hard, cold, masculine, bitter, angry, resentful. And again, it's going to cause her mental, emotional, and physical well-being to corrode. Really think about that. If you want to provide healthy masculine frame or containment for a woman, I don't want you to let her or expect her, worst of all, to fend for herself. Instead, think about fending for her on a mental, emotional, and physical level. In any situation you get yourself in, I want you to think, how can I fend for her in this situation? Do you want to know the sad reality? Okay. We're not objectifying women by making this comparison. Okay. She's, she makes a comparison or an analogy. And I, I like this analogy too, because I talk to men all the time about this. So it's like men take better care of their car. Men provide more containment for their car. How so? A man who takes pos positive ownership and therefore creates containment for his car, he acts in the best interest of that car. He doesn't let the car fend for itself. They clean their car. They rub it with a white diaper. They uh, clean it and protect the paint job. They make sure to clean it inside and out. They appreciate their car, okay? They put effort and energy into the upkeep of their car. They keep the oil tank full. They rotate the tires. They learn all about the engine. They lock the car door so no one steals the car. And guess what? Taking care of their car this way, providing positive ownership, makes them feel good, okay? So what might providing containment for a woman when she feels genuinely positively owned and fended for look like on a physical level? Fellas, I'm going to give you some examples. These are not exhaustive, but this is going to give you some good ideas on how you can provide positive masculine frame or containment. Okay, let's let's go. To energetically put your energy around her, no matter where she is and you are in the world. To take responsibility for her well-being, which is the positive form of claiming her, okay? To create safe, supportive conditions and a safe, supportive environment where she can grow and expand. Hmm. Rather than expecting her or encouraging her to grow and expand by virtue of her not having those safe and supportive conditions or environment, okay? Uh, to provide for a woman in terms of resources, this could be financial or otherwise. To take it upon yourself to create improvement in her life without being asked to do so. To take charge of a situation by taking the lead. 
to be reachable and available to her, to take initiative relative to her, to be active relative to her well-being instead of passive. And I'm going to make another reel today about passive men. Ooh. There is nothing more unattractive than a passive man, but I got you. I got that later on today. To protect and defend her physically, to protect her emotional well being, to do things like open doors for her or pick her up in your car or pour water into her glass or have her take your arm when walking down the street, to reassure her, to remember important dates and make those dates special to attune to her mental, physical, and emotional state so that you know what is right to do or not do relative to her specifically. For this, you must put considerable energy into understanding not just women, but her specifically. To do things that take pressure off of her without her having to ask. To organize a date with all the details totally under <coughs> your control. Excuse me. To take charge of logistics, to initiate repair if rupture occurs in the relationship. Hold on one second. <coughs> Excuse me. For the pause, my throat is dry and I need to make sure I can <clears throat> have some water. Okay, to initiate repair if rupture occurs in the relationship. To put effort into meeting her needs when and wherever necessary. To help her find ways for her needs to be met outside of you. <clears throat> to be physically with her or make sure she's okay when she is not with you. In other words... Make sure she does not have to fend for herself when you are not around to fend for her. To not put her in lose-lose situations. To not put her in dangerous situations. To deliberately create regular time to be present with her and totally focused on her. To appreciate her. To be communicative and speak your mind as well as to listen to her. Mm. To caretake the relationship itself to be and act committed to her, to do things that cause her pleasure, to make decisions, especially tough decisions, to take responsibility for your decisions and actions, to figure out what needs to get done and actively get those things done, to take responsibility and initiative for facing and resolving problems you might become aware of or things you might need to heal within yourself, to provide containment for any children you might have together and or she might have from another man, if you're a stepfather, uh, to be in your masculine energy and power, to help her face the parts of herself that are resistant to being contained, rather than to simply stop giving her containment when she resists it. Now, keep in mind that you've heard a very long, yet definitively not complete list that it's not a really good idea to think about all of these things and to just try to memorize them and do them. The best way to go about this is to just simply decide to take positive ownership. That's what the Bible asks you to do. Take positive ownership or responsibility of your woman. So when a man does this naturally, because containment is actually natural for the masculine, all of these containment providing things naturally come as a result of making that decision. This is actually a natural quality of being in your masculine energy. So this is going to become second nature. The minute you make a decision to become a container for a woman, it's not like you need to be told how to do it. Okay. Uh, here's something I want you to keep in mind. So the reason why we've moved away from this is because we have not had good examples of masculine containment, okay? So containment has nothing to do with being controlled, being oppressed, being limited or looked down on. 
If a man adds any of these things to your life, he's not actually providing containment for you. If he does not, he's not providing containment for you. Quite the opposite, because those things are not actually in your best interest. So being uh, oppressed, being controlled, being limited, being looked down on. If he's doing those things, that's not containment. OK, that's not in your best interest. That's not positive ownership. Containment is something that's natural for any man to provide any woman, regardless of whether she's his mother, his sister, a daughter or friend or anything in between. It's also natural for men in general in society to provide containment for women in general within society. A lot of people don't realize that. But that is a very natural thing that masculine men do. Um, containment used to be something that men in general in society, they provided. However, because we're moving away from the model that we had before, which is mom and dad in the home, right? So dad provided containment for mom and he provided containment for the children. But we take dad away and now it's mom that the children are looking to to provide containment. OK, so take that away. Young boys, they were taught by their fathers and other male elders in the community on how to provide containment. You take that away. And now what's happening? Boys are looking to their mothers to provide containment. So one of the things that she talks about is. The single family home, and even more so, the broken single family home is the most destructive structure that has been created in our modern day society. It's also to blame for why there is so much wounding relative to containment within society. So little boys and little girls, once there's no man in the home, right, they're looking to their mother to provide containment. There's no male example and, and it comes very naturally for men to provide containment, but that is gone. Now, little boys and little girls are looking to their mother to provide containment. And, you know, some women, you know, that doesn't, most women, that doesn't come natural to us to provide containment. So we're now moving into that masculine part of ourselves in order to do that. And that's where all the problems begin. So this is a developmental trauma, okay? So many men grow up stunted in this way. They never learned from a healthy masculine male role model how to provide containment. They're actually looking for to a woman to do that. That's why we're seeing men more now than ever. Men are more passive than ever because they were not told or taught the skill of providing containment. OK, so. um Men who are in this position of not really ever getting proper containment from a male themselves or being taught how to contain. So they're just fumbling in the dark. They're trying to figure it out. A lot of men go subconsciously for these polarity flipped relationships. So we're seeing men be more passive now more than ever. They're getting into the re these relationships with women who are in their masculine. OK, but the hope is that one day we can turn this all around. Now that we are learning about relationship polarity, now that men are creating safe spaces for other men, which I think is absolutely wonderful. I have I listed time and time again, all of the male platforms on Instagram um, and, and on YouTube. I have made lists of all of the wonderful male platforms that I encourage other men to follow be with other men, be with healthy men who know how to naturally provide frame or containment for women and for children. That's how you're going to learn. But now that's something that has to be taught in adulthood because many men in our modern day society, they never got that, you know, when they were young. All right. I apologize. I got a call. I don't know why I'm on Do Not Disturb. Uh, Forrest Huguenin says that's all well and good. But a woman has to not just say she wants that, but relax the masculinity so that she can receive that precisely. And I want you to understand something because women have not. Again, we, I, I want to take you back to my original comment about the trauma. So women who have not seen healthy masculine frame, women who either have grown up with men who have been abusive or neglectful women who have grown up with men who have been, you know, physically abusive, sexually abusive, 
They have been oppressive. They have been misogynistic. They have been sexist. See, that's that has been the blueprint for masculinity for them. So that's why they say, oh, all men are toxic. All men are, you know, toxic masculinity because that is their trauma response. They don't have any other healthy male role model. We all need to relearn what this looks like. So the men need to learn how to provide it. The women need to learn how to receive it. Okay, so to the men, I say head on over to those male platforms, especially the healthy ones, the male therapists, the male coaches that are actually in healthy relationships and healthy marriages. They grew up with their dads. They grew up with their grandfather. They grew up with men who were healthy, masculine, divine men. Okay, run to their platforms. Do not walk, run and learn what that looks like. I just gave a laundry list of what it looks like to provide masculine frame or masculine containment for the women and the children in your life. And to the women, you can stay on this side of the fence and I'm going to teach you that yes, you need to be contained. You need masculine frame to be at your best. You need masculine energy and you need to fall into your feminine energy and stay there. One of the things that women say to me all the time, because remember y'all, I'm going to make the real about passive men. That Well, these men are passive. and Okay, that does not mean that you go into your masculine energy. I don't. I have had three men in the last week attempt to try to talk to me, attempt to try to, I guess, and I'm just, you know, I'm, this is conjecture. I guess they're trying to take me out or talk to me or what have you. And because they never assertively said, hey, I'd like to take you to dinner at Friday, at Friday night at seven, because they never assertively called me or made plans that it didn't happen. It did not happen. And I am not going to fill in the blanks. I am the girl. I am the woman of the situation. And so until that man can say, hey, I'm interested in you. I'd like to take you out on a date. I'd like to have coffee. I'd like to go to lunch, breakfast, dinner. I'd like to do it on this day, at this time, at this place. What do you say? I'd love for you to join me doing this. Until that happens, ain't nothing going to happen. Ain't nothing going to happen. I'm not going to make anything happen. I am the girl. I am the feminine energy part of the equation. And I have to tell women over and over, stop stepping into that role because a man will not. A man that is passive is, ugh. that's called, ugh. <laughs> okay, I can't explain, I can't express that enough. I am not excited or turned on or interested in passive men. And y'all coming in the comments, well, he's shy. He's shy. No. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop making excuses for these men. I, I, I will not do it. That is a passive man. I'm good. I don't need a man that bad that I have to, you know, step up, step into that role, go up to him and try to make something happen. And look, y'all, make it easy for him. And you know what I've done? I've further imprinted in his mind, oh, Anita's going to do everything. Anita's going to make the date. Anita's going to pick the place. Anita's going to pick the time. And guess what kind of relationship I'm going to have? A flipped, depolarized relationship, which I do not want. I do not want that type of relationship or marriage. So I'm going to, I'm good. I'm going to pass because I like men. I like divinely masculine men. I like assertive men. Look, I got my list here. I like men to initiate. I like leaders. I like men who are appropriately vulnerable. I like good communicators. I like men who are emotionally intelligent. I like men who are purpose-driven. I like men who are open and honest and emotionally available. I like men who are responsible and strong. I can keep going. That's for another live. I'm going to do another live about that. Okay? So, ladies... That is not an invitation to step into that role. Do not. Do not step into that role. Lean back. I lean back even further. I do even less when I am met with a man who is passive. And guess what? Nothing happens. 
No date, no, no phone calls, no text, no nothing. And y'all, I can't make this up. Some of these men I've known for years, years, we've crossed paths. And every time it just is like clockwork. Every time this is what they say. Yeah. How come we never got together? How come we never did nothing? How come we never dated? They all say the same thing. And I'll just be shaking my head, y'all. I can't make this up. I can't make this up. Pressured Batty says, I know you're Christian, but why do lesbian relationships work better than heterosexual relationships? In my opinion, it, it, it doesn't have anything to do with uh, same sex, doesn't have anything to do with that. And I wouldn't, I would even challenge to say, I don't believe they do. I have lots of same sex couples in my practice. They have just as many problems as opposite sex couples. Sorry, they really don't. But one of y'all has to be masculine and one of y'all has to be the feminine. You may be of the same sex, but one of you has to take the masculine energy and one of you has to take the feminine energy. Second of all, here's what I will say about lesbian relationships. A lot of those relationships eventually become sexless. So if you like being married to your best girlfriend, if you like living with and being married to your best girlfriend, okay, that could be great. That could be great. I don't, I'm not interested in that. I don't want to be married to my best girlfriend. I want to be married to my lover. So I don't ever want to be in a sexless relationship ever. So that's just me. But no, they actually don't fare any better. I have some same-sex couples in my practice, and they have problems just like everybody else. So one person has to take the masculine energy. One person has to take the feminine energy. She said it must be the black men. No, it's, it, I'm not even going to go there. It's not about the black men, and it's not about the men. Everybody has their work to do. I've been saying this forever. Ever. Everyone needs to heal. Everyone needs to heal. The men, the women, all of us. Uh, that's the number one thing to separate masculine men, BS, passive men. Yeah, that's it. It's the, that's the fastest way for me to know if a man is in his masculine or feminine energy. If he's passive, I'm like, pass. If he's, look, ladies, if he's passive, pass. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Okay. That's it. That's it. But yes, gentlemen, provide masculine frame. And let's put, let's, okay. Henry Fogel says the historical and generational damages of black men. All right, Henry Fogel, I'm going to give you this one. Queen of Cascade, thank you so much for buying a badge. And the rest of y'all can buy a badge. Okay, I'm giving this free lesson today. The rest of y'all can buy a badge. Please support the platform and buy a badge. I'm going to give you this one, Henry Fogel. I will agree that because historically, throughout slavery and everything that our people have been through here in the United States, black men were not able to provide containment. They were not able to provide healthy masculine frame for their woman and their children. So that might be part of it as well. There, there could be a, a historical, um, what do they call it? A generational, there could be a generational, that could be one of the generational reasons why, because men were, black men were not allowed to provide healthy masculine frame or containment. OK, so I'll give you that one. But y'all, if y'all only knew how I felt about slavery and everything, 400 years and all of that. See, I, I make some people mad on here. I, I just I just I'm not I'm not in that camp of blaming everything on slavery, blaming it. I'm just not. I'm just not. It's too many black people doing too good out here to continue to lean on that argument. So stop. OK. We need to do what we can do now. We need to learn something different and we need to do something different. That's the camp that I lean on. Do something different. You know something different now? Do something different. Hello. Thank you, Forrest, for buying a badge. I appreciate you. Thank you. Y'all can buy a badge. Okay. Y'all can buy black women have generational and historical damages also. Okay. I'm going to give you that one. Yep. Y'all just need to do the work. Okay, because I'm going to be honest with y'all. My mama wasn't no slave. Her mama wasn't no slave. Her mama wasn't no slave. I have to go back four generations to find slavery in our family. And it was also brought to my attention that my people were house slaves, but still. <laughs> so, no, what that got to do with now? That's, that's the bottom line. What does that have to do with now? Okay, get your stuff together. Figure yourself out and get yourself together. Right. He said personal accountability is the answer. It really is, y'all. 
I can't make this up. Stop. Stop with the nonsense. Okay. We all got to be responsible for us. We got to do what we got to do now. Okay. Alta says, right. We need to take accountability and do better. There you go. Okay. So I ain't even going there with that. You know, people start talking about that. I roll my eyes. They know how I feel about it. You know, no, okay. I'm not doing that. I'm I, I'm not held down. I'm not no. I have the ability to do better. I'm teaching my kids better. My mother taught me better, and we're gonna keep this train rolling. That's what we on. It's too many black people making too much money and doing too well and in too much power for us to continue to lean on that argument. But anyway, he says my great my great grandfather was a slave, but he ran away and became a wealthy farmer. There you go. So he figured it out. So y'all need to figure it out. All right. So gentlemen, this was the lesson for today. I've been saying it since I've been on this platform. That is, that is your part. That is the man's part, the divine masculine man's part in creating a healthy, happy, long-term relationship with a woman. He must provide frame. He must provide a healthy containment in which for her to thrive. Okay. She feels safe. She feels secure. He fends for her. That's what we talked about. He makes her life easier in, in the way that he can. That's your position. Okay. And men who do that they don't have these problems. I'm just keeping it 100. They do not have these problems that these other men out here who are passive, who don't take initiative, who don't who 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 let the woman lead. These men out here who are not leading, these are the men that are having problems in their relationship. These are the men whose women are leaving their relationship. See y'all, I'm a, I'm going to be honest I'm going to hurt your feelings for a second. You all honestly want to believe that a woman who is loved, who is cherished, who is who has healthy masculine frame, who is paid attention to, you honestly want us to believe that these women are just leaving their marriage in droves. Oh, I just don't want a good man and all of that mess. That is not true. And to the men who want to come on and say 70 to 80%. Of, of divorces are initiated by women. And some of those women have a good reason. You ever stop and think about that? That she might have a good reason to initiate divorce from an abusive, cheating, lying, <clears throat> uh, passive, don't want to help around the house, don't want to help with the children, want her to go 50-50 on all the bills, want her to cook and do all the cleaning and do all the rearing of the children. And come on, y'all. So that she don't have no good reason. Cause I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't wake up one day pregnant with twins and decide, you know what? I don't want to do this marriage thing anymore. You know, this is boring. There's got to be, the grass has got to be greener. There's got to be somebody better out there. No, that's not what happened. And I don't know many pregnant women that would do that, especially women that were, you know, financially well taken care of. So how about this, fellas? If all women care about is money, explain this. Why would I, married to a millionaire, just wake up one day pregnant and decide to, to put my husband out of the house, to decide I didn't want to be? Why would I do that? I just lost my mind. Because according to y'all, it's all about money. According to y'all, I should, you know, oh, she's got, she's married to a millionaire. He's buying her a car and a house and everything else she want. Hmm, why would I just up and leave that just because I'm bored? Oh, when I'm pregnant too, don't forget that. So I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just hormonal and I just wake up one day and want to leave my husband. No, that some of us have good reasons, good reasons to end our marriage. Reasons that are mired in dignity and self-respect. Okay? So hear me well. And let's not paint a broad brush stroke that all oh, women are leaving their marriages in droves and, you know, they just bored. They just don't want to be married no more. For no good reason? Really? 
And how about this? I'm going to give you all this. I'm not saying that, that that's not a percentage of women because I have had a couple women come into my practice and I had to set them straight and look, y'all, they ain't never come back. <laughs> I set them clean straight about leaving their husband over something stupid. I sure did. I was like, let me get this straight. So he's working, coming home, cooking, helping with the children, doing this, doing that, you know, paying the bit and you are stepping out. You are cheating on him or you are just, you know, this isn't fun. This isn't exciting. It's not what you thought it was going to be. Are you crazy? Like, yeah, I've checked a lot of women. That is a percentage, but it ain't as big a percentage as y'all think. Okay. It's not a big a percentage as y'all think. Most women, when we choose a man, we love him. We expect him to love us. We expect fidelity. We expect to be treated, you know, we expect to be cherished and treated with respect. We don't expect all the nonsense that a lot of us are getting. And let me go here. Not only are we, we not expecting the nonsense, we, we have stayed in it for years before saying, you know what, <laughs> I don't even recognize myself. I don't even know what's going on. I, I can't do this no more. I don't even love myself. I got to get out of this. See? That's what I want you to understand. Okay? So kill that noise. Don't bring that noise underneath in the comments section about 70, 80% of women leaving their marriages and initiating divorces. A big percentage of them have a very good reason. They have a very good reason. Okay? We all need to take accountability and responsibility. All right? Let's, we're not going there. We are not going there. Okay? So... Fellas, provide containment. Provide positive ownership to the woman in your life. Okay? Provide masculine frame. Take care of her. Provide a safe space for her to be soft and sweet and feminine. Okay? And ladies, my next live, you ready? <laughs> you ready? Because to all the fellas on here, okay, oh, I'm coming for the women. I'm coming for y'all next. I'm coming for the women. You have a responsibility as well, right? If you have a good man, if you have a man providing frame, providing that containment that you need to be your best, okay, I'm coming for you next. I'm coming for you. I'm, I'm, I'm pushing you clear on the side of the feminine. And you have a responsibility as well. Okay, so I'm coming for you next. Okay, we got a we got a whole thing going on in the comment section. You just stated all of the black people that are successful. I said there is a large percentage of black people that are successful. There are. There are a large percentage of black people that are millionaires, multimillionaires. Okay, so no. Nope. All right. Therapy has really put me in the position that I'm in now. Thank goodness. Because you were saying that you you put your wife through all kind of mess. And yeah, thank God. Get it together. The relationship is a responsibility of both. That's right. Get it together. Especially if you with somebody that you done put through some crap. Get it together, y'all. All right. I hope you appreciated this lesson today for the gentlemen. Ladies, you are up next. Uh, I may do it tonight. Let me see how I'm feeling. I may do tonight's lesson for the ladies because y'all, I'm about to come for y'all too. You have a responsibility in this as well. If you have a man who is providing healthy frame, if you have a man who is doing his best, I mean, he probably got some stuff he need to learn, but you know, that you have a responsibility in this too, to make this relationship work. Land on the side of the feminine. Be pleasable. Be led by a healthy man. Okay. All right. I will see you all later. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you to everyone who purchased a badge. Thank you for everyone who purchased a badge in today's live. I appreciate you all. Every now and again, I like to come on and do these lessons. <clears throat> these are the things I do in my coaching program. Um, the courses that I have, these are the lessons that I teach to help men and women. Like we got to get this thing together because I'm telling y'all, I just don't know. Some days I wake up defeated I really do I, I and that's why I don't be I don't be on social media like talking about it because I just feel so defeated 
with what uh, the complete mess that I see back and forth is just so much. But I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a gird up my strength. I'm a get back. <laughs> I be telling people sometimes I got to take a day or two off and then I get back right. I get back right. I pray and God give me that shot in the arm and I get back. I get back right. He said, what caused the divisiveness and opposition between black men and black women? I mean, that's, that could, we could boil it down to other races. We could go there, but we could also boil it down to some of our own stuff, our own crap, our own traumas. And again, at some point, you got to look at yourself. Stop looking at the other person. I'm focused on myself right now. I'm focused on the mistakes that I'm making. Okay, that's what we need to do. Focus on yourself. Stop pointing the finger and point that finger at yourself. All right, I will see you all later. Have a great afternoon and evening. And as always, stay open to love.